friends, it's voiceover Danny here bringing you another book inspired DIY. Today we are going to be making a pair of super cute book earrings to show your geeky book nerd side that you get to show off and make yourself. Just for quick reference, this was the picture that gave me the inspiration to make these. The things you will need to make these mini books are everything in this pile. Look carefully, seriously, there is a lot. You will need cardboard. I just happened to use some leftover cardboard from a package of garbage bags. Writing utensils, you definitely want a black marker and something you're not afraid to press down and score with. A ruler with both inches and centimeters as units of measure. Elmer's glue and a paintbrush. Cutting tools like scissors and an X-Acto knife. Some white thread. A sewing needle that I have pushed through cardboard. A binder clip. Tacks and push pins blank white printer paper, and finally, decorative fabric for our cover. Let's go! The first step is making our cover. We are going to be making two rectangles out of cardboard, one cover for each earring. They should be one inch tall by two inches long to be the same size as this one here, unless you want them larger or smaller. Just keep in mind that if you size up or down the cover, you are also going to need to size up or down the white paper that's going to go inside of our covers as well. And though it's fairly explanatory already, I am only making one cover in the video, but you are going to need two to make two separate earrings. Next, you want to find the center of your cover. What I did was put the ruler along the bottom just to make sure that the center falls on the inch mark in the middle and draw a line up the center and then a line on each side of that center mark on the 1 16th tick. You want to score those lines because they are going to be the folds of your book spine. I used my mechanical pencil without the lead out and pressed hard enough to make the indent along those two 16th tick lines. When those indents are made, you are going to fold on those two indented lines, but make sure you do not fold the center line or you will wreck the spine of your cover. Make sure that the cover lines up the way you want it, and then we are going to get started on making the inner pages of your book. You are going to be making 16 pieces of paper, 8 for each book, with the dimensions of 2.2 centimeters or 22 millimeters tall, by 3.8 centimeters, 1.5 inches long. Cut all of them out and collect eight pieces per book. Stack eight pieces evenly as possible and fold them down the center as straight as possible, cutting off the edges that are sticking out to make all of the pages uniform and pretty. Place the pages inside of the cover we've made and try to line up the center folds of both the cover and the pages as best as you can so that way when the book closes you know that the pages will stay inside. I've drawn a line so it's easier for you to see the center folds of the pages because what we're going to do now is use any sharp object you've managed to find, in my case it's a tack and pins and safety pins, to poke three holes along the center fold of both the pages and the cover so that way we can make a binding for our book. You need to make sure that it goes completely through all of the pages and the cardboard and try to keep your spacing even when poking the three holes. Next part is going to be easy for anybody who has a basic knowledge of sewing, but for those of us that don't, let's pretend that I totally didn't take 5 minutes to thread this needle with thread. Just thread a simple needle with a bunch of thread and prepare for the confusing part because now we are going to be actually binding our spine of our book. Taking your sewing needle, you are going to push it down through the bottom hole of the book making sure that you pull the thread all the way through until the knot is sitting snug against the crease of the book. It will later be hidden between the pages. Then you're going to bring the needle back up through the back of the spine and into the middle hole, always pulling snug to make sure that the binding and the pages stay together. Then we are going to go back down through the top hole, removing whatever safety pin you had in there after that, it's pretty much following the same pattern, but coming back up through the middle hole and back down through the first hole we started with until you create a figure eight pattern. I did this about three or four times just to make sure that everything was secure and tight and the pages stayed in. 
and then I started fastening off my work by tucking the needle under the already threaded thread and going back down into whichever hole you were supposed to go into next but you don't pull the loop completely through you can wrap it around your finger so that it doesn't go all the way through if you come back up through the next hole that you're supposed to go through and pull the needle through that loop it will fasten it off you can then snip off the rest of your work and then your book is done i used a binder clip to just hold the book closed and then i set it aside because now we're going to work on a cover because every book needs a pretty cover right grabbing your fabric of choice mine is a blue and yellow star pattern but for the sake of the video i'm going to use this flowery owl pattern but whichever pattern fabric paper you choose we are going to make a rectangle that is 8.25 centimeters long by 5 centimeters tall we want to make two of these one for each book I used my handy dandy binder clip to hold the middle pages out of the way and then I trace out the cover size onto the fabric within our rectangle that we've made once we have the cover size on the fabric we are going to draw lines from the corners to the outer edge of our rectangle to make the sides angled. This ensures that when we cut out the corners on these lines, we will have four flaps that will be able to wrap around the cover of the book properly. The last thing you need to do with these flaps is draw the center fold on the fabric so that way you know which area you need to cut out to make our two longer flaps into two smaller flaps to wrap around the spine properly. Now it's time to glue it all together. Taking my glue and my paintbrush, I went and glued the inside pages together. This was to cover up the knot that was made during the binding process, and it also made it so that when the book was finished, the pages fanned out properly and nicely. Then it was time to glue the fabric cover to the cardboard cover. A word to the wise, those of you that are going to use actual fabric like I did, make sure you have something underneath your fabric when you are gluing it because I did not and it went all over my table and then I had to redo it with paper underneath. And then I just glued all the flaps down making sure that they laid flat inside and on the back so that the cover would look nice and pretty and flat and smooth. Casually poking my finger with a sewing needle and all that mess while watching Lilo and Stitch while filming this because that's what I do at 12 o'clock in the morning. And then unlike me, while waiting for the cover to finally dry, I would go back and re-thread your needle with more thread because now we are going to be doing the last step which is turning our earrings into actual earrings and not just mini little books. This is probably going to be the hardest part to explain but what you're going to do is you're going to pick which side you want as your top and you're going to wiggle your needle with an unknotted thread between the top portion of the binding and the cardboard cover. When you pull the needle through, the thread will come off and you'll be able to tie it into a knot. Let's pretend that it didn't take me forever to tie this knot. Once your knot is securely tied, you can cut off all that extra string that you don't need. You are going to then thread a jump ring through an earring backing like I have and you're going to somehow miraculously get the jump ring through the little string loop that you've made. I know you can't even see me do it, so I am going to list an alternative right here. At this point, my camera had cut off and I wasn't even in frame for most of it anyways. All I did was loop the open jump ring that held the earring post through the knotted thread and closed it up. Another alternative is using two jump rings instead of struggling with that thread and knot method. Simply poke a hole in the top of the spine of the book you've made, making sure that you're also going through the fabric as well as the cardboard. Then you loop one jump ring through that hole and close it up. Loop the other jump ring through that one, but make sure that the earring post is attached before closing up the jump rings and wearing them. And that is it, you're done and you have a super cute pair of nerdy book earrings that you can show off and brag that you actually made them yourself. I think they're super cute. I also use this book making method to make a necklace as you can see. And I also made a mini book and attached it with a flower to a hair barrette that you can then wear in your hair. Let's be honest, I went book making crazy. That is it for this tutorial you guys. 
tweet me pictures at Danny Darling X. Should you choose to make any of these fun book related jewelry items and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! Thank you for watching my video. Hope that you really enjoyed the show. Hit the subscribe button down below and go and read some books.